Game sale consoles, non high def DVDs. Let's talk about this for a minute. That's getting into the video. Video is sponsored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That left a comment on one of my videos about Adobe and Chrome Studio 2. Windows hardware. Do I really like Okay, guys, let's talk about our <coughs> new framing behavior inside of motion. And, uh, wait, look over here. Just for, uh, I just noticed this. Does that look like a maple leaf to you? Or does this look like a maple leaf? But not this. Somebody at Apple's having some fun, huh? <laughs> but anyways, I'm sorry. I just noticed that sitting here talking to you guys. I've got a slot scene set up here. As you can see, I've got a camera added to my scene. And a few lights. And some text and a, a, a map from within my content. Okay, I'm looking at it from my perspective view. And I can go over here and you can see, I can zoom all around and you can see my scene, how it's set up. I just got a couple pieces of text set in there with some lights on it. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to demonstrate the framing behavior. So let's go to our camera view. You can see my camera right here. Let's go to my camera view by clicking up here and going to active camera. Okay, now we're looking at it from that point of view of that camera. So let's go to our camera behavior and make sure everything is... Fine, I got our angle of view. I'm going to turn it back a little bit. Okay. Now you can see I have a little camera emblem beside my controls up here. This means I'm controlling the camera itself. Okay. You zoom in here. Okay, this is where we can start. This is where I want our camera to start. This is the scene we're viewing. If I go to perspective view, you can look at it from a bird's eye view of the scene. You can see my camera there, my lights, and everything. So let's go back to camera view, or active camera view, okay? Now let's select our camera and add a behavior. Let's go to add behavior, camera, you'll see a new one called framing, okay? So this is going to cause our camera to frame in on whatever we want. You'll see it automatically pulls up our adjustments, and we have this target image well, and that's the main thing. What do we want our camera to frame on will be whatever's in that well. So let's grab our motion forward text and drag it and put it in that well. Okay. Now you'll see we have our framing behavior down here in the mini timeline. I don't want it to start as soon as the scene starts. I want it to start about 20 frames in. So I'm going to bring the end point to about frame 20 there like that. And I want the framing behavior to last about 30 frames. Okay, so at a, on about frame 70, I'm going to hit my O key. Now you can see at the end of the framing behavior, my text is completely framed up. Now this is the length it's going to take for that camera to zoom in and frame up whatever's in the image well. Okay, so let's do some settings because you can see it's working. It goes in, it zooms right in on our text, but it's kind of stiff. So under our framing behavior, let's go to our transition and say ease both. And let's take our ease out curve up to about 90%. Okay, and now I want the camera to drift back slightly before it zooms in. So under my path offset, I'm going to set my Z up to about three, four, five hundred, 500. Depends on how much you want the camera to drift backwards before it zooms in. I'll set mine way up to about 600, okay? So now you can see when I play this back, the camera will drift back, and it zooms in and frames in right on that text. So now what if I want to frame in on something different in the scene, okay? Well, we have our Apple text. So what we have to do is add another framing text. So I want to zoom up to my can pull my playhead up to where I want the second framing behavior to start. I want to focus on the motion for text for a few frames, then I want it to zoom to the Apple text. So I'll move my playhead up here, select my camera, and add another framing behavior. I accidentally added the camera. We don't want to add another camera. We want to add another framing behavior. So go to add behavior, camera, framing. Hit the I key to bring the endpoint of the framing behavior to where your playhead is. And we'll have it last, I don't know, 30 or 40 frames. Okay. And hit the O key. Now we have the length of our second framing behavior. We can see we have it up here too. Our image well is empty, our target well. So let's drag our Apple text into that target well. Let's do the same for it. Ease out will be both. The transition will be ease both. And let's up our ease curve. And our path offset will up our Z. So we'll drift backwards a little bit before we zoom in on the camera, on the text. Okay. I was going to show you guys how to zoom into a third one. But I'm pretty sure after the first two, you get the idea. So I'll turn those back ones off there. Because if you want to add a uh, zoom in to frame into some, a third object or a fourth object in the scene, you just add a third and fourth framing behavior. Okay, so there we go. Let's have it focus on that for a few seconds. Hit Command Option O to set our out point. Let's turn off our layers and let's play this back. 
You can see it comes in, zooms in. Now, if it zooms too fast for you, just lengthen out your framing behaviors. Okay, it's not a problem. Now we can open up our layers and select our camera. We can now monkey with our go to our camera tab. We can now monkey with our angle of view, and we can make our angle of view take it up to about 70 or 80 to 90 degrees, and you can see that stretches that map way out, and it's going to start us in a completely different skewed area there, as you can see there now. So we can start like right here now that we upped our angle of view and play it you can see it's going to give us a much more skewed look and it really just depends on what you're looking for now if you have something in the background you don't want to see until you zoom up on it this is where this near fade and near plane and far plane and far fade come into play but we can talk about those in other time other times now you can also got depth of field here now we got our depth of um, field blur amount, the focus offset. Now since we haven't really got anything in the background to use depth of field, I just wanted to let you know that it is there and it's really nice. Okay? So we can go to render best. That will clean up our text a lot. You know, that just saves us some processing power. Now when I push play, you can see it's going to float back. Zoom into our text. Now it's going to go and focus on the Apple text next. Zoom out, float around, right in there. Now you can see you can see how this would be useful to use on several different elements in your scene. You can go from one scene to the next, from one picture to the next, from one group of text to the next. I could have put my app. Let's go back to perspective view. Okay, now that I've got those camera behaviors locked in, you can see our camera path. I can select my Apple text and I can move it anywhere I want to move it, and the camera will follow. So I can put it way back here behind motion if I want like so okay now when I play it it will it will update so let's go back to our active camera now you can see our Apple text is in a totally different spot but that's okay because motion is smart enough to adjust on the fly so let's let it play it'll zoom out focus in on motion 4 okay then it'll focus there for a minute and it'll zoom back around and focus right on an in on Apple without a problem because motion is smart enough to handle that. Once you've set that framing behavior, no matter where you move it, that, that camera is going to follow it. So now it's going to zoom out. Now you can see, now it's going to zoom around here, zip, right into the Apple text. Okay, so let's turn that back to draft quality so you can see it a little bit faster. Okay, so let's play it. So you can literally experiment and move your text or your elements wherever you want as long as that framing behavior is locked in and it'll stick and you can say oh I like this look better than the last one see now that looks pretty good I like it almost better than I do the last one so um, it's up to you it's a great little behavior saves time saves energy and if you notice I didn't set one single keyframe beautiful great job Apple thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next movie